what is the terminal value of Bitcoin in today's purchasing power? If you just said 900 trillion today was fixed, 400 trillion was fixed today, and 21 million is fixed today, then because the free market is deflationary, and exponentially so with technology and everything we're moving, then the purchasing power of the 43 million expands in infinitely over time. Because it's, So the IRR of Bitcoin for the last 15 years is 45%. And I can't find anywhere with an existing system, houses, anything where I can make a rate of return of 45% a year. So you would just invest in Bitcoin. It's going to be chaotic against this. It's going to be super chaotic because the system that extracts from you will do everything to keep you in it. Twitter it probably won't be around in 10 years. I mean, is, that, is it going to be that rapid of a change? Yes. The answer is yes, but it won't look like Mr. Jeff Booth, thank you so much for joining me today and being a playable character here in a sea of non-playable characters. Thank you, sir. <laughs> no problem. Great <laughs> to see you, Brandon. So, uh, yeah, I always joke with everybody. There's not a lot of critical thinkers uh, nowadays in this world. And, uh, and Jeff, for anyone you know, who knows you or doesn't know, you should say, uh, the author of one of my favorite books, The Price of Tomorrow, and the general partner of uh, Ego Death Capital. So I'm not going to won't have you go into your background. If anyone wants to check that out, Jeff wrote about that in his book. It's a phenomenal book. I give it, I've given it to many, many people and you have to go read that so you can check out Jeff's bio there. But a, a real estate you know, entrepreneur, a tech entrepreneur over the last you know, 30 years and now in the Bitcoin space doing, doing that, but now in, in the future that we're, that we're building and that Jeff's building. And so that's why he's here today. So we're going to jump around a little bit here today. Um, I told you an email. I, I, I you know, some of these podcasts, I have some visions for it going forward of just kind of doing some different things, getting people together over time as we grow the podcast and, um, and whether it's eating hot wings together, I don't know if that'll be it, but just growing <laughs> things and, and getting outside the space is again, it's the, the adoption thing where we have this, I don't know if it's a marketing thing or branding, um, I'm not going to call it problem, but we have to get outside our bubble somehow. So, um, in saying that, you know, price is a thing that everyone wants to talk about, obviously. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll touch on it a little bit today, but um, you, you recently talked to Nico, I think in the last few months, uh, of Simply, Simply Bitcoin and talked about $92 million Bitcoin. Now there's a lot of nuance to that, you know, so some people would say, oh, you know, whoa, what the heck, you know, um, can you explain what, the, what that is? Like, what world are we living in at that point? Is it Mad Max, you know, because governments have to print hundreds of trillions of dollars in order to get to those points. What kind of world do you foresee going forward into the future here, we just talked about, you know, the children offline, stuff like that in the future generations. What do you see, you know, when you kind of look in, in the, on the horizon here and what we're about to enter here in the coming decades? Yeah. So one really important point, I didn't say 92 million. Specifically True. You said 46. Before. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. But, but I didn't even say 40. I said the implied value. True. Right. Um, Correct. On our measurement. Yeah. And so, so that became clickbait to drive clicks. So, so it's because it's That's not why I want to start here. It. Yes. Yeah. We're seeing it all over so, the place. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so, and you're, and, and, and a lot of people, so all I just took, compared is the balance sheet of the world today, 900 trillion, um, that has $400 trillion of debt. That balance sheet would not be 900 trillion if the $400 trillion of debt was insolvent, but the $400 trillion of debt is insolvent, right? So in other words, the, the, all of the assets that you're mispricing because you think the debt is solvent are included in that asset value of a, of a balance sheet. And, and it's a, it's a good way to frame because if you imagine you, just you're inside you, Brandon are inside that balance sheet and you have your assets of your house and your car and everything else that are all some total and your debt against it. Mm -hmm. If you think you're, if you have a whole bunch of clear assets, then you can continue to spend based on that, right? So you think your wealth would be included in that. So your spending power, how much you think you have is based on that. Now, if all the debt became insolvent tomorrow and it all, it all failed, then all of the house prices and all of the money in the bank wouldn't be there. Um, and everything would collapse to it, let's say this, it sure wouldn't be a $900 trillion balance sheet. <laughs> it might be a yeah. hundred billion dollar balance sheet because there would be nothing left because it's the entire thing is based on, on pieces of paper, having that, uh, uh, and, and those pieces of paper, that debt being solvent. So now if you divided that 900 trillion to think in purchasing power, 
by 21 million, you would get about $46 million uh, uh, or $43 million per, uh, per, uh, per Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, and now make up for lost coins, how many lost coins it would be higher. It would be higher than 43 million. But then if you, if you realize that in five years, that $900 trillion balance sheet won't be 900 trillion and the debt won't be 400 trillion, because if it was, if it was the same, the entire thing would collapse because it has to grow exponentially to be able to keep it solvent. In other words, money manipulation has to grow exponentially to keep that system solvent. And you're measuring everything from that money manipulation. So, so call that a two quadrillion dollar balance sheet at the time with maybe 1.4 billion or 1.4 quadrillion being debt, maybe more, <laughs> right? As that explodes, yeah. um, is, is essentially you're driving inflation, destroying currency values to be able to do that. It might be higher. Um, then measure Bitcoin at that time and the purchasing power right, of that Bitcoin, even if it had doubled, hadn't actually doubled. It's just the balance sheet you're measuring it from. So it's, it's trying to, it's what I was trying to do is say, what is the terminal value of Bitcoin in today's purchasing power? Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, that's only one side of that kind of, uh, that's only one side of that argument. The other side of that argument is the 43, if, if you just said 900 trillion today was fixed, 400 trillion was fixed today and 21 million is fixed today, today, then, then, then because the free market is deflationary and exponentially so with technology and everything we're moving, then the purchasing power of the 43 million expands in, infinitely over time because it, because relative to other things that are falling over and over and over forever that purchasing power increases. So that's what I was trying to describe. Um, but but be, so a lot of people took it as a comparison against the U.S. system, which I was, uh, it was only a comparison against the, the, the dollar-based system or the fiat system to show how ludicrous that example was. Yeah. No, and I, and I love that you, you did say implied volatility or implied value, I should say. And so that's a, a great point because you're seeing it all over the place. So I'm really glad you clarified that because I, even I misspoke w- what you said. And that's very important because we're seeing this all over. And, and part of it, too, I was talking to Luke Broyles about this in, in you know, meeting people where they are. Right. And trying to we talked about you know, increasing adoption, which is increasing education. And you, you have to talk about price a lot. Right. Because it's an important aspect, obviously. At the same time, you know, it's. Like I, for me, like I was just telling you offline, I played hockey my entire life. I, I was watching the news as a kid. I was, um, you know, th- studying finance, a great financial crisis. Like I told you, all these things really got me into into this 15 years ago in politics. I was even even before that in high school. And I always thought I was the weird one and it just didn't make sense. And then eventually I realized, oh, I am the weird one. <laughs> I didn't I got along with people, everybody. But it was just like, oh, maybe I am the weird one. And to me, it was like, why doesn't everyone care about these things? You know, is it the fiat that just brainwashes people for a a hundred plus years? And and that's why people aren't thinking about this and they don't seemingly care to a point where why it's a decision. It's a decision to use different money. And that's all it is. Um, You know, is it just the 3%? I think of the Revolutionary War here in America was fought by the 3%, really, at least in the beginning. And you just need that small and transient minority. You know, how should we be looking at it in terms of you know, people are looking to educate, adopt, you know, adopt Bitcoin, get people to educate uh, with the podcast, whatever it is, the, th- the work you're doing. I mean, you go on stage and talk to thousands of people. What should we be doing as as Bitcoiners looking to increase that education? I think everybody's doing it. And 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 this is such a change in society and change in what uh, what's happening in the future. So and people it, what would be natural, like if if the, the couple of us first first principles. Free market is deflationary. The natural state of the free market is deflationary. So we know that's the first principle. Um, as a result of that, we can say we've never actually had a free market for any length of time. It's been a control system that's stolen that money from us over time. And the end of those control systems ends up in war throughout history, the where you reset set the, uh, the dollar and say, promise not to do it again. And then it happens again. And so the entire, our entire history is filled with that error code. So, so, and that's why you kind of have to ask if Bitcoin is decentralized and secure and is different 
and, and society has never seen that before, then the rules on top of that are completely different. And what the, what, where that, what makes, what happens in the future, completely different than all of the, our history books that contain the error code. Well, that would be a really hard thing to understand if you're, if you're, if your future is informed by your past, but whose future isn't informed by their past because they're constantly thinking. So all of our knowledge came from the result knowledge before it. And we're on top of that. So why this would be really confusing, it would be obviously really confusing. And, and even within Bitcoin, there's a whole bunch of people that talk like they totally understand it and don't. And there's somewhere along moving, kind of unwinding because what they're trying to do is they're trying to attach their previous knowledge on top of a protocol that doesn't care about their previous knowledge. They're trying to carry their, their, all, all of the other things that this changes and they're having a hard time kind of regrouping on what this means. And it's an easy, it's way easier to, if you know that it's, that's why I kind of break this into chunks. And I say, if it stays decentralized and secure, the, the first thing you would do is, okay, okay, first attack it. Why will, why won't it stay decentralized and secure and do everything you can to say, okay, what, what are the attack factors? But once you assume that it, if, it, if you assume it will stay decentralized and secure, now you have to, instead of, you have to start from the future that that means you have to start in first principles and what that means for where this world's going instead of dragging all of your previous knowledge to describe how this will work. By the way, it's the same thing in business. It's why most times a monopoly cannot see the innovation um, because all of their people that created the monopoly are stuck in the belief system of the monopoly. That's all that's happening here. But now you could say every one of us is somewhere along a line, a, par a, a, a paradigm of understanding the, the new system and that new system takes time to be able to under, to kind of under the people's minds to change and understand what that looks like. Do you, do you think it's, it's again, we, again, offline, we were talking about the, the Titanic for some reason, it's just like the analogy I use all the time with people. And it's, it, it does seem to work and people kind of get it in that sense of like the fiat legacy debt based monetary Titanic. That's a system we're in. It's going down and it's like even voting and all these different things. And I know people ask you about elections and voting and politicians, and we can get into that. We don't need to necessarily, but it's, you know, I always, I think of like election, like voting, it's, you're trying to vote for a new captain after you've hit the iceberg. And it's like, well, what, what is that going to do? You know, like it's it, like you said, it's the same system. You're not, you're rearranging deck chairs and the lifeboat is Bitcoin and you have to get off and you know, real estate, like we were saying that like real estate looks really good. It's the last to go into the water. Um, so it's just it's just w very weird, like you said, it's like a, a step function, an order of magnitude difference, where people have that hard time seeing it. it. Speaking of not a hard time seeing it, maybe, but George Gammon, you you the last year or two, you guys have gone back and forth, um, kind of over and over again. And I think you guys seemingly got to a place where like, even he admitted himself that he's like, hey, we agree on everything. It seems to be like time horizon. Or maybe that's not the best way to say it, but he thinks that people seemingly i'm paraphrasing what he was saying but they he doesn't think people change as much as 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 you will like we know bitcoin changes people it's changed us right it's changed our lives where he says hey i don't know like maybe it's another fourth turning 100 years from now do people do they learn the lessons of the past like how do how do you see that because like i i see both your arguments i i land on your side i get what he's saying though of like oh hey 100 years from now us that live through this how are 100 years from now how are people going to no, no, the ills of fiat, they're going to be like, well, we things got, they're really good. They're really frothy. Let's, let's do funny games again. How do you respond so this, to that? So, so, so this is actually why this, those conversations are so important and yeah. people take sides. He's a tarot or he right. doesn't get it. <laughs> and, right. And, and, and then they got all inflamed about their idea and, yeah. and, not, and I, I have no problem talking to somebody that doesn't, uh, doesn't quite understand my point of view or cause, cause we want to thank our sponsor. This show is presented by Bitcoin Trading Cards, an orange pill in a pack, making talking about things that normally make you want to cry fun and easy. The scarcest and most educational cards to ever exist. Available now. Because the measure of the future, it, you could have no measure of the future. You have to use first principles and understand mm -hmm. kind of what's going to happen. So, so inside, um, inside his argument, what he's actually saying 
if you dig down, as he say, is he say, he's saying Bitcoin won't say de decentralized and secure because we won't let it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what he's saying, because he's saying it'll get captured by uh, by by humans, yeah. um, because if and that's and and I'm saying it won't. Right. And 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 this is why, because once you have an insight of something like this, how important decentralization and security is for the world that we're moving uh, to, you add your voice to it and you defend it and you protect it and you're building new innovations that become uh, the, the or that that are further decentralizing and securing that in that network. And he's arguing if history has never seen that. He's right and right. I'm right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um and 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 but again, if 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 it stays decentralized and secure, that's why I kind of point on that. And then I want to dive a little deeper yeah. into that um on what I see. But why I say that specifically is it it attaches his belief into my belief and it says, okay, then tell me how you're going to centralize this. Tell me how, because, because unless you can tell me how you're going to centralize it or all of the attack factors that you can try to centralize it in, then this doesn't care it, what your belief is. It doesn't care. It doesn't care what my belief is. It doesn't care what, uh, what George says. It doesn't care because it, if it, it doesn't care if a government wants to print 30% more currency units against it, it doesn't care if the government wants to expand the government by 50%, a hundred percent. It just doesn't care. Um, so you have to go a deeper level and you say, have to say, okay, tell me how you centralize this. Um, and, and that is the foundation. I think the difference between those, but he believes it'll be, um, uh, uh, sometime a human action will force it to be centralized and I don't. Um, and I've done so much work to, 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 uh, and by the way, the attack vectors that I see on this are so much more extraordinary than what even many of the Bitcoiners think. Cause I've done that work to realize most people will be like George mm -hmm. complaining about the system that they're making stronger with their very actions. Most people will live pricing Bitcoin, pricing from the fiat instrument, making it stronger through their actions. Just about every, and so how could something stay, stay decentralized and secure against that force that we were making stronger while making ourselves weaker? Those are the things that I really wanted to dig into to understand what, uh, what Bitcoin looked like and how it's, how it's, uh, created that, uh, that that decentralization and security and scale to 8 billion people. And that's also where our funding path and, and, and we're, what we're funding has been to be able to make sure that those rails are complete, um, that it can't be stopped. Um, cause, cause if you just, so right now I'll give you a really simple example. If you started with, uh, if, if you start, if you started with, uh, Bitcoin on layer one, uh, is decentralized and secure and can't be broken after every nation state attack possible and every bit of FUD uh, possible. If you realize that that's, uh, that's already happened, it's behind us and there's no way to, to attack Bitcoin sufficiently enough that you could centralize it, then you would have to, from that point, control layer two. We were, we are early in the innings of all of the exact same attacks happening on layer two. And most Bitcoiners are, 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 actually, are actually making those attacks stronger because they're getting caught up in the misinformation of them. So we, this is something that expected, built technology to stop. The, 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 that's what Fediment is, right? right. right. <laughs> um, that's what Breeze is. So, the, so, so, um, because you could see what would have to happen way before it would happen, right? It would have to, because if you, if these, the systems we're talking about are the systems we're talking about, um, are incompatible together. That makes sense, right? Yes. So one allows prices to fall for humanity. Um, that's, that's Bitcoin. One has to steal that productivity. Those are incompatible. So, so how would you make that inc incompatibility compatible? You would, 
I am telling you what I would do if I knew this. I was Doctor Evil, and I knew this, and I had to make this. Uh, the, um, what I would do is, okay, I've lost layer one. Let's make sure layer one is tied to the U.S. dollar, and let's wait. Let's win layer two. Yeah, and then I could tur- then I could go from gold to uh, to uh, uh, to petrodollar system to Bitcoin, and I could extend the same game for another for another twenty years. Um, so that we're very early in that game. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting. I was just watching um, a couple of t- tweets the other day. I think Pierre Richard was kind of going back and forth with some people. He had, you know, lightning's a psyop, you know, it's, you know, this and that. And, it, you know, we're kind of touching on that in a way. Like, I think, like you said, people are experiencing cognitive dissonance in a way, like we're going up a layer and now it's, people are like all over the map now. Now you have people in layer two, they're learning about layer two and they still have a lot of people on layer one just learning Bitcoin. And most people don't even understand Bitcoin or, you know, the first layer. So we, we have like, it's starting to be this, uh, you know, the fog of war in, in a way. So it's really fascinating when you start looking and at it's it. And it's not light, it's not lightning that's a psyop. It's, it's all the things, uh, it's all the things the people, trying to fight yeah, against. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and, but he, um, if that's what he was saying, I didn't No, Pierre that. was not, he was saying, he's no, right. it's not, people were attacking him and he's like, what do you know? Like, no, it's not. <laughs> so, 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 so seeing through the fog of war, when some of those same people were convinced that layer one was going to be uh, broken because mm-hmm. of the, uh, be, be, uh, because of the energy, um, psyop, or anything else, right? Or the like. It just it's just moving to layer two, um, and, and and anyway, I, I start from the principle: this had to happen. Mm-hmm. It was inevitable that this would happen. It would be inevitable that people would be more and more confused, and even smart people within the Bitcoin space would be uh, confused. Inevitable. Yeah. And I it, but and I've been investing my time elsewhere for a long time. To be able to make sure that 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 there is no psyop that could uh, that could take this uh, uh, down, the uh, we're mo- we're moving to a truthful, a hope, truthful and abundant future on Bitcoin. Period. Why? Because that's who we are as humans. It's going to be chaotic uh, yeah. against this. It's going to be super chaotic because the system that extracts from you will do everything to keep you in it. Fear. Um, a, a more extraction, believing there's a savior in that system that is going to give you this to be able to extract something else. That's a system. It's not a, it's not a person. It's a system thing. And re- you have to remember you make it stronger with all your actions within that system. And, and, and so, 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 so if you're, wor- I, I say, pick the thing you're most concerned about in the world. Um, and, try to solve it with broken money or a broken layer too, right. To, to yeah. consider, to drive that. Uh, and, and, and you'll quickly see that you're, you're the node making that system stronger with all of your screaming at it and yelling at it. Um, and if you understand that, tune it out, move over to time and build on the honest layer, uh, honest protocol. And because that's where we're going and more people are joining us every day. Well, it makes me think of so many things. I want to talk about uh, the mining pools, the centralization. I know like Bob Burnett, there's a lot of people talking about that right now with the ocean. I want to touch on that in a minute uh, go- because we're going down this um, this vein this vein here. But, you know, I, I think it was Sailor. He was saying that his one of his biggest concerns, because in wrapping up this George, the George Gammon thing, because again, like you said, what, what I took out of all of it, phenomenal arguments back, back and forth or debate, I should say, very robust. A very high level and you guys are 99 percent aligned and i think that's the thing that like you said people like take sides and it's like you guys are saying in general that very similar things um and sailor's thing i, I believe he said can i like, just pa- can i just yeah. pause you for can i pause your one thing just and then yeah. and then keep going the reason i want to pause you there is if you understand where george has come in the last three years from some of these conversations and from many many back channel conversations with him to get to the period he mm-hmm. is now he was way further away from this and now he's so and now he's really good now he sees yeah. so so why but why would george be any different than any other person including me before i was here, here mm-hmm. right you have a framework that you're trying to defend 
and the new framework is breaking down all of the other things of the framework and, and you let go of a lie one finger at a time. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and so, so that's just where George is just on that path. And now, you, and, and, and so instead of screaming, just welcome them to the path. Yeah. Um, and now where do we disagree? Why do we disagree? What is the, what is the specific thing in there? Okay. Sorry. I yeah, no, I th it's great. I mean, and I know you've said this before many times too, but it's empathy, right? And we kind of touch on it with, you know, loop, loop Royals. I've talked to him many times about it right meeting people where they are so that's part of it the sailor thing i, I was just going to mention was that his concern because this this kind of came full circle with the george thing of uh bitcoin changing you and the the sailor thing was you know his big concern wasn't technical it wasn't some like you know dark back alley thing it was just humans having the the unwillingness or you know the willingness or unwillingness to have sound money and and to be educated on it and understand the you know, like you you always talk about the this it's system of inflation this fiat corruption versus hey we have this this thing we're building over here so that to me is just it, it just brings a full circle of like again you look at a, a sailor who's saying that same thing a, a different way but the very same thing in essence you know and just educating and building that world in saying all that though do you think like I think of like Ben Bernanke's paper from O2 deflation it can't happen here which probably got in the Fed job, right? And then you have the IMF paper in 2012 of, you know, about re repression is the way to go. Um, is it, in your mind, is it better to have just this inflationary, just take a decade or two, a couple decades in inflationary and like we, we just gives us runway to build Bitcoin? Because the other option, I guess, is what deflation and just uh, into oblivion, just quickly, boom, depression and like just collapses. I mean, how do you, because I, I used to be the guy who was like, when I was younger, as a young kid, right? I was telling you earlier, go like it's merit rules you know like it's gonna be like it's gonna collapse well, let's go let's get ready for the crash now i i'm probably more on the side of like hey we need runway we need decades to of inflation to figure this out and give us a chance yeah the um it doesn't matter what i want <laughs> it, like it really does it, 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 it doesn't care right it is so mm -hmm. bitcoin is pricing a free market system which is deflationary and if you hold bitcoin then everything will fall over time, according to Bitcoin. Um, and you could be now if it only becomes layer one, where where Sailor largely is. So the first, let's say, the risks of, uh, of layer one, he's he does identify with some of the risks. I just say humans are terrible at predictions. Yeah. Terrible. But watch watch the talking heads on news, um, and uh, and and uh, and it, it, you almost get paid more if you're wrong more. Yeah. And look at the look at the entire financial system that people keep on talking about these experts that couldn't be wrong more often. Mm -hmm. And then they keep listening for the next time and the next time and the next time. So do yourself a favor. Look at who's been right in their predictions over and over and over again and lean. More, not that they will be right, but but listen to them and say, what do, what are they saying? And you probably more more signal sailor has been right. A bunch of a lot, a lot of things, even back and back before, and where where Apple would be and what would that uh, look like. He made a big bet. He was late later to Bitcoin, but he made a big bet, understanding, and he did his work to be able to understand this and how networks grow. Um, so why why that's important is if you couldn't change something, if something was uh, was was unchangeable in Bitcoin layer one, then you would what you do is you try to create something else right because you wanted to be the guy mm -hmm. right theory i'm all i'm going to give more fun so because the these bitcoin maxis won't change this right they're too hardcore which is actually the the which we want in a protocol you want something that's that's unchanging or very little changing because because most people most people uh, building on it onto it will be will be misunderstanding the risks because they're really bad at seeing the seeing the future so they're terrible at it and then you'd have a whole bunch of people thinking that they're really good at it and trying to create no it needs to do this but they would be too bad at it too so so the, what makes bitcoin resilient is that it takes this time and it forces this through <laughs> all of us as nodes to to ensure that you don't blow the, uh, blow this up. And, um, so that's a huge part of layer one and, and it, it, it takes away our need to change something just to 
put that 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 increases the risk, right? So that's actually the beautiful thing about Bitcoin through the, through the nodes and small blocks to allow more people to run nodes to be able to keep uh, keep this decentralized and se uh, secure. Critical piece, but he, but Sailor is right because we control it. It's actually us. We're the nodes. Um, and 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 if we're the nodes, then we also are um, uh, influenceable to to a state attack or a misinformation attack that tries to slide something in that we don't see. And as you get better and better with information or or AI, you might be able to change people's minds uh, uh, in into some of this and this uh, the attack to to insert something. So he's right specifically on that. How do you stop that? How do you stop that attack? You have more of these conversations, and you have more people that are that are defending this network <laughs> yeah. that other people will go to to say, "Hey, what do you think about this change?" And there's so many of those people now that it provides massive resiliency for this network. And those people are getting smarter and smarter and smarter and, and more and more and, and more attuned to what this looks like, which means that that protocol, that layer one protocol ossifies. So in, so in saying that the, I wanted to touch on the centralization of the mining pools. Obviously this has been a big thing recently and you know, the Bob Burnett's, there's many people that have been talking about this and talking about the, as you do always say, as long as it stays decentralized and secure, there's many facets of Bitcoin. This is one of those obviously major facets where, you know, there's, hey, we're, we're, there's consolidation of pools and people are getting worried about things, uh, you know, choosing which, you know, what, what block is, you know, what are we going to use? And, um, and just a censorship aspect in general, I guess that's what people really need to know, I guess. So what, are, what is your take on just the pools, where we're at with that? And, maybe concerns you have or don't have or, or, or how people can, you know, Hey, we're going to start our own ocean and we're going to do this and we need to start going back the other direction. What are your, what is your take on all that? Yeah, I think this is going to decentralize further too. And there's no worry, worry here in the long run, in the short run, there's, uh, there's some specific, uh, and but people are aware of those and building, yeah. uh, building the options. One of those options is ocean, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And some of, and, and, um, and there's lots of different options that are uh, that are that are emerging. The other thing with kind of big miners is a lot of the big miners are not as efficient, kind of on the new machines and the new capital because they have the, the older machines or their energy, and so it forces decentralization of this network uh, just through the free market and, and competition over and over and over. So that's not where I, I would say if if I was focusing on attack factor, I would focus higher in what's happening right now with what I said on layer two. Anybody that's talking about Bitcoin as just a store of value is actually, whether they knowingly or unknowingly, is actually uh, also becoming a threat to Bitcoin. Because that means it has to be captured at layer two. Yeah, that's that is fascinating. I remember Sailor has been saying, and he, I feel like he changed his tune in a way. Um, with he would he, for a while he was saying it's you know property, it's property, not currency. Uh, and again, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but he was he was venturing uh, moral story. He was venturing away from hey, it's money, currency type of thing, and he was hey, it's property, it's property. I always took that again as just as nuance and having to understand the situation he's in and the scrutiny he's under. And it, but it seems like he's even changed the way he's been speaking about it over the last couple of months to your point of you, you have to look at it as everything. It's it's not just a story of value. I know people try to reframe it as that. So I think that's that's really um, fascinating. So that's, again, aside from there. But I, I wanted to. And, and, and actually, if you if you go into that, if you go in that, let's say, let's say you're a public company. Mm -hmm and regulatory and every it, there might be a perfect reason even if S sailor knows exactly what we know which i suspect he does there might be a perfect reason to be able to make sure that it can live on as as layer one and and you can to help the attack vector there to be able to say uh to say that but there is but there is bitcoin doesn't allow the world to transition 
uh, to abundance unless it's also a layer two and uh, unless it's actually money. Otherwise, it's just a, it, other, and it, maybe I'm a little bit, uh, or it would take a lot longer to get there because it would just play the exact same game that we've been playing for the last 70 years onto Bitcoin rather than the petrodollar system. Yeah, it's a whole nother, what, what do you, I guess I wasn't even planning to ask you this, but what are your thoughts on just on bricks and like, again, a lot, <laughs> I ask you to mind read, which is never a good thing, but I mean, just uh, what bricks and what's going on there, where do you, where do you kind of, kind of see things falling? I mean, it just makes no sense to me that again, you're like, oh, we're getting rid of the dollar, uh, you know, hey, that's, it makes sense because if we weaponized it here in, in the West, but, you know, they're going back to, to gold. I understand they, they own a lot of gold, so it behooves them in that sense, but it also would behoove you to start buying Bitcoin if you're many of those countries. Where do you kind of fall with just kind of the currency wars that are going on right now? Sorry, I just missed the last part, but I think I got your, uh, your general question. Um, most people in the world are playing the game as it was uh as it was has been played for all of history and if they if they can control money and extract a little bit of the productivity that flows to 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 people then they can create a massive power and use that power to their advantage and the more people that you're extracting from the faster deflation is supposed to be in the market and the faster that you're able to extract the more power you gain at other people's expense. So most people in the world today are playing an extractive game that is really a prisoner's dilemma with each person losing as a result of that extractive game. China is also playing that extractive game um, and they're playing it in some cases um, better than the US because you have a controlled society. In China, mm -hmm. you're not going to win against a controlled society by being more controlling. Yeah. Um, so essentially what they're doing uh, with Belt and Road and and whether it's Venezuela or any of these countries it, or, or Russia, they're giving better terms than the U.S. Mm -hmm. right? They're giving better, they're creating debt traps, they're creating all the same thing and they're giving better terms. But for China, one, to be able to be an uh, open currency unit for the world, that means their currency would have to fluctuate and they won't do that because it can't in a, in a closed market. So I have no worry about BRICS and all this nonsense. Uh, US, dollar, U.S. dollar is going to get stronger. A lot of these countries are going to fail against the U.S. dollar. And, and um, that means all imports, um, raw materials and labor get cheaper in the U U.S. And you can extend the game for a long time from the U.S. dollar, uh, dollar system. But, but all parties are playing on a game board that doesn't exist anymore on Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is a cooperative game rather than an extractive game. And, and if you want to play the extractive game against it, you're going to eventually be repriced by it anyway. So in, in saying that, um, in transitioning a little bit, what, what makes you I was re listening to some of your uh, recent interviews and we, and you touched on it a little bit, but you know, people, there's the people that will, Hey, you know, what, what's the point you're talking about venture capital in, in the Bitcoin uh, space. And you're just saying, I, th I think it was, uh, Scott Melkers actually, that came out in the last day or so. And, you know, you're saying that Bitcoin is going to reprice even the people that are trying to play games on the layer twos, threes, whatever it is. Um, how do you square that circle with people who are saying, well, then, yeah, why would I, why would I invest in anything? Why would I do anything? Um, if I can just hold Bitcoin, um, what are, what's your simple answer to people? It's actually the most simple thing in the world, right? The, so, so if you were, if you were in Argentina in 2000 and you could invest, actually, before I do this, if you're in the U S, um, why would you invest in Google? Why don't you just hold cash? Because yeah. you think Google is going to have a higher return than your cash. So you're, you're predicting your return rate, your, your, your risk-free rate of cash, and you're predicting the value you're going to create for people and value that you're part of the value creating for people out of that. Okay. Now you're in the U S and making that, that choice cash versus investing in a company. Why would you do that? Because you can get a higher return rate. <laughs> of course you do it. Um, now, now you're, now you're in Argentina and you can take your currency that you know is going to be worthless in uh, you're in 2000. Google's just emerging. 
and you can see the 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 Argentina peso is going to be worthless in 24 years, and you can invest it now into Google's growth and cash flows in U.S. dollar. That'd be a pretty good trade, right? Because right? you'd have venture returns on top of a vent on top of an asset that wasn't losing value as fast as your Argentina peso. You would that would be a pretty good return. That's all that's happening in Bitcoin. It's the same th- exact. Uh, exactly the same thing, except for Bitcoin is repricing all currencies. Mm-hmm. So the so the IRR of Bitcoin for the last fifteen years is forty five percent. So so that means my rate of return hurdle needs to be plus forty five percent, or I won't make an investment. And I can't find anywhere with an existing system houses anything where I can make a rate of return of forty five percent a a year. So you would just invest in Bitcoin. Um, and just hold it. But what if you wanted to make a higher return rate? Wouldn't it make sense to do the exact same thing that Argentina, that exa- that that toy example I gave from Argentina to Google? Wouldn't it make sense by building on top of the infrastructure and technology on top of Bitcoin, and and helping other people, and those companies create that are creating more and more balance sheet or more of their revenues in Bitcoin? You're building. You're, you're building, so you have the rate of return of Bitcoin plus the accrual of Bitcoin on your balance sheet by creating, creating value. So we're having, what we see, what we see is venture, venture type returns on a venture type asset because, because why we're, why we're seeing it is we're, we're, we understand the true rate of return implied by Bitcoin. And that's forty five percent, and we're investing where we can beat forty five percent. And the only way you could beat forty five percent is by creating a Bitcoin company that's increasing your Bitcoin uh, on your balance sheet by creating value. So it's it, it's I, for me it's the I, I can't believe more people can't see it. Is that the is that the sailor uh, trade or the sailor playbook? Then I I think no no very, very, his is very different. His, I think of the it, of the uh, burr. Is, is sorry, really quick, because I want I want you to explain this because I think yeah. of the the if anyone's familiar with real estate, the, there's the Burr method. The last ten years got really famous, and I've employed this many times um, of raising money and then buying the asset, buying the the property, or I guess the debt, if you will. So using other people's money, getting the financing, fixing the house up, putting a tenant in, and then returning all the capital, and then you have an asset. I didn't pay anything for it, infinite return, right? So I guess. This is where I think of like what Sailor's doing. It, it, then there's what you're talking about, which is different. It's a venture, you know, like you said, venture capital is a company and they're getting more Bitcoin into the, and holding on their balance sheet. So I'd love for you to kind of walk through these couple of things of, and how they kind of, I don't know, relate or just even parse them out for people. Yeah. So they're very different strategies. If you have a, if you have cheap access to capital um, and you have an operating business that's profitable, then you can lever that um through cheap access to capital. And if you're safe on that, especially if you hedge out some of the risk um, on on this, you can use the cheap access to capital and you can use the inflation inherent in what's coming to drive the higher value asset, which is in this case, Bitcoin. That's what Mm -hmm. Sailor is doing. And he is is killing that playbook. Now, uh, um, and and so he he practically invented the, I think Pierre Rochard talked about it like, yeah. 2013 yeah. or 14 and that that would happen and and sailor is 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 become a master at that uh and um so he's using an operating business to be able to do this i know lots of people that are doing the same thing in smaller mm-hmm. businesses uh, uh, uh similarly yeah. which which is actually the same thing that you just said in real estate all real estate is is a short on on the currency yeah. right yeah. you're buying an asset and you know, and and you know that, uh, and and you know that the currency must be devalued, yeah. and so you're taking a leverage against uh, than an asset, and 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 Bitcoin is a better asset, far better asset, than real estate in that in the, in that. Uh, my, my. So what we're doing is different, yeah. right? Some of our companies, as they become profitable, and they have lower cost of capital as they become really profitable. Mm-hmm. We'll do the same thing as sailors doing and extend that. Okay. Yeah. But what we're doing is we're building companies. We're building the new Google. We're out. building the new. Right. Right. Yeah. They, and, and as and here, here's an interesting 
uh, thing in, in this ecosystem too, that is so different. I, I, I think I, I kind of intuited, but I was surprised at how fast it came. Um, a lot of the companies don't go from C to series A to B to C to D as they're spending more and more marketing to get more new, more users, they go to C to series A and they're profitable and they're adding the Bitcoin to the balance sheet every, every mu month. Um, and so, so you, they don't have as much dilution. It actually looks like venture capital used to look like 20, 30 years ago when venture capital could have staggering returns mm -hmm. because, because it's actually the true free rate of the or is the true real rate of return, which is what I said before is 45% per year. It's wild. Absolutely wild. It's wild. Yeah. That's it's, uh, it's, 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 it's wild, but those are two different, very different yeah, very strategies. Different. Yeah. How, yeah. how do more people, not yeah. real estate people, not see that playbook? Because like to me, like I didn't think about it that much. I thought about it a little bit. And then I saw a sailor doing it. I'm like, that's just, that's the Burr method, basically. And like real estate people, that's a huge thing the last 10 years. Like how do people not see this? Yeah. So one of the reasons that they don't see it is, is real estate has, you can, you can, you get finance. Uh, you can it. create, yeah. you can get, yeah. no, no, be, be, because there's a renter in it. Oh, true. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and so Bitcoin, because Bitcoin, you can't do mm -hmm. that. You have to have a different operating business to have a, uh, have a, a profile to hold you through the highs and yeah. lows and the drawdowns. Uh, that's the, otherwise you'd get liquidated. That's why most people, most people, so people are, um, people are overvaluing the tenant returns because they're they're valuing it in fiat dollars Short term yeah yeah to be able to, to be able to take on more debt mm -hmm. and this is just a better this is a far better play ah my goodness I, there's a list a mile long of things i want to talk to you about but uh i know we're getting towards the end here in our 10 minutes or so what uh, i want to talk about the future uh briefly here what do you like i would love to get some of just your a minute or two of your 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 kind of your thoughts of just like whether it's you know, small modular nuclear reactors or like, like Amazon, for instance, and I know you've got thoughts in this space, like Amazon to me, with what you talked about again, five years ago in the book with 3d printing and all the things that are coming, I see them as a materials company eventually, like those warehouses are just gonna have materials and you're going to order and then they're going to send you material. They're not going to send you the little thing because you're going to print it at home. Um, just things like that. Like, what do you, what do you see in the next, you know, five, 10, like life won't even look the same 10 years from now when we look backward at it. So like, what are you, what is, what is Jeff Boosie? <laughs> yeah. So there, there's such radical changes coming, um, and from both systems. So w w one of the things right now, what we were kind of getting into is, um, economies work, uh, and weather systems and, uh, and our bodies work under chaos theory, mm. right? And they're not, they're not linear. And what a lot of the prognosticators that are talking about on TV, they're talking about one variable <laughs> in all of the different variables. And they're talking about exactly the straight line on what you mm -hmm. can expect. And it's so, it's so much more complicated than that. You cannot talk about the one variable because all of the other variables conspire and one little change somewhere else can change everything, your entire uh, model. And so, so in how complicated this is, like what you're getting at with the, what I taught or wrote about with 3d printing and when that's, because it's coming, it's just when is it coming? Right. Tied to AI, yeah, right, which is a different variable. Tied to the monetary system, which is a different variable. Tied to Amazon's monopoly right now, which doesn't have a, actually any way, a, any benefit. Right, all of their, all of their, all of their incumbent costs to run their monopoly right now mm -hmm. is at a disadvantage, except for their users, mm -hmm. to the new to the new where, where it's coming that's decentralized further and further out that it doesn't require that same type of system to energy systems all decentralizing and and all of the variables in between it's really hard to give a say what does amazon look like or what does this look like because it's informed by all of these different ideas and these ideas from the free market that are creating all of these things that then crash into each other yeah create other create create other things so that's how um that, that's that's why i try to where are the things that i know are first principles mm -hmm. where are the things that so if i know those are those are first principles i know those things are true now what what do those imply to what do other things do i believe will be true over time and where are the pockets of opportunity 
to um, to kind of watch how this uh, watch this how, how it plays out will be a part of how it plays out. Yeah. What, did you see the really quick side tangent? Just maybe you just said something that made me think of it. But I just saw something like yesterday. Do you happen to see the guy who he's like a former NASA guy who like broke gravity? They were you know they were saying like through like static electricity like tran like uh he's like we can get to the moon in three hours and. I saw like a. I didn't. I, I, I didn't see that oh, one. Boy. A lot of that stuff ends up becoming nonsense under for, further peer pre, pre review. Mm -hmm. But some of it is real, right? So I don't know on that wow. specific one. But I watch these types of things all the time, and then I go deeper into which is which I is. Figured, actually... yeah. <laughs> if there's anyone that did, it'd be you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, do you? What I guess in saying that, what do you think? What's the biggest? It could be Bitcoin or non Bitcoin related. So in that same vein, what do you? What's the biggest? Um, either a trend or invention or kind of discovery you you've been tracking in the last maybe the last year or last few months or or something that's on the horizon even i think the two biggest things are bitcoin and bitcoin and everything that's happening on uh, on the layers on bitcoin mm -hmm. and and understanding that bitcoin is not a technology it's a protocol so when you understand it as a protocol that's bounded by energy you understand you have to think in energy and Bitcoin and, uh, and, and, and how it's a protocol and how protocols come in layers. If you get that, which is complicated to get because you don't think most people don't think in protocols, they think in, in technologies or companies. So, so that would be a big area of learning. And then you can see opportunities as the, as these Noster, Bitcoin, Fediment, other things come in together to create all different things on top of this protocol that you can't even imagine from your current bias. So that's that's one major area of learning and disco learning discovery and opportunity because all of the uh, 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 the world's wealth is going to move here, right? And um, the other the other big one is artificial intelligence, um, and and your job won't get re uh, replaced by AI tomorrow. Um, you'll get replaced by somebody who knows AI tomorrow. Um, and then, and then that, then that job will get replaced by AI. So there's a wave coming that, that you better learn this. Um, and, and those two forces, um, are, are, are actually because the productivity gained by AI should be forcing prices down faster, right? That's the, that's the point. That, that's, that is the thing that's driving the break faster to the existing system that has to consolidate all of your time and energy to save you from the thing that should be freeing you. And so those two major trends today um, are things that you need to understand and how they integrate together and what that, that looks like. And there's lots, by the way, there's tons of opportunity in these areas too. Nasser, I know we have a few minutes left. I want to... Uh touch on Noster really quickly here and uh, then we'll play a little game, a little word association lightning round that I always end with. Um, you've talked about Noster, obviously you, you spend your time there um, and, and not Twitter. Yeah. So you've talked about this and people can go back and look at other interviews. We've talked about it, but do you still see that as a, um, like kind of the example or almost the, the standard in, in a way, I don't know if that's the right way to say it necessarily, but do you just see, you know, five, 10 years from now, the communication just being on these protocols and in like these decentralized, like, Twitter it probably won't be around in 10 years. I mean, is that, is it going to be that rapid of a change? Yes. The answer is yes, but it won't look like it. So, so if you went on to Nostra today, um, well, if you went on a year ago or what, what I was on just after Jack Dorsey tweeted it, I wanted to look at it and say, and then I was, wow, this is already something. Um, so I was on, I think December, sixth or something a year yeah. and a half ago yeah um and if you see the growth in that uh that ecosystem and all the different technologies kind of creating like at the protocol la layer that are all interoperable together with bitcoin and all interoperable together that now new entrepreneurs are building on top of it to extend that it, that ecosystem is growing at an crazy rate users not quite yet so, so a lot of the users, because the network effect, just like the U S dollar network effect, network effect on Twitter, mm -hmm. pe uh, people stay because everybody else is there, right. Until you have kind of 10 times more of the value and then they start to move and then it unwinds. And so that 10 times more value could come in a number of like, how, how do you describe value? That value could come in somebody that's, that's 
deplatformed on Twitter, they might find Noster ten times more value because they always have their their uh, their user, mm-hmm. and they could just go to all the clients compete with for them, and they they can't be shut out. So, so for a small portion of the population that knows this, there's already ten times the value. And then as the entrepreneurs are building onto this, and developers are building onto this, it's creating more value pockets all over the place that are going to bring on waves and waves of uh, more people. And it's going to disrupt the centralized services categorically because they cannot compete the the value at open protocols can innovate crazy fast. Not everything works, right? Mm -hmm. But because of the interoperability, you start to the new uh, entrepreneur, just as it'd be a tiny little piece of code on top of this on top of this to create something totally different. And unique that offers 10 times more value to way more people and as more people start to understand how fast this is happening more people will race in providing it more value right they'll be leaving the other things that they ascribe value to while they're doing it which is a new network effect being born out of the, out of the new te- technology we're just er, we're just early in there but uh but i, I it, why i'm spending the time there same the reason i'm spending the time on bitcoin that's where all the future value is mm-hmm. yeah do you do you have uh do you have two more minutes yeah okay um what are you what are you reading right now you know is it you know it could be personal development stuff like what is it that you know makes you 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 know it's not like we were saying earlier there's the three percent right and like i i say this because it's it comes from a place of like i for 25 years of my life i'm 37 i've i've just wondered like what makes certain people tick and like again there's a three percent they fought the revolutionary war and there's something that made those people tick and the other 97 percent were a lot of more british loyalists and they were like uh whatever you know like i'm good being a surfer i'm good like whatever and at that to, to the end of my life i will always question why that is i i just don't i can't square that circle um, so what is it that makes you tick? Like, what are the, what are the, you know, not the frameworks you're studying, but, um, you know, the books you read, like what, it, what goes, I mean, how do you, how do you become you, I guess is not, is a cliche or like this weird way of saying mm-hmm. it in a sense, but how do you tick in, in a, in a sense? Because it's, it's me. Like, I'm, I mean, your book, I forgot your, I had your book back here. I've had a set of your so long, but I, you know, I just realized earlier. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the advertising on it. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's important. So, important book. by the way, your your question there uh, is is a question I think about all the time, and and what I've come to, uh, I could I could spend hours Same. and hours and days yeah. on this <laughs> this specific topic, um, and why I do why I do the things I do, why uh, why do others do the things they do, why do um, why do we all what 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 idiosyncrasies, what mm-hmm. incongruences do we have in our thinking and my own thinking? And then how do I fix that? And why do I do that? Why did I think this before? What did it? So I do a lot of reading. And, and so anytime I'm probably reading three to five books and, um, and I'll, I'll, um, and I'll, I typically, it hasn't been updated in a while, but I typically keep a list of kind of some of my favorites on my website, mm-hmm. just, a, and there's, I think there's, 300 books there or 400 books uh, there, but, and I need to update it. Um, the, so I'm constantly reading, but deeper than that, what I realized uh, uh, is this, we're all connected. We're every single one of us is all, all connected. We're the supercomputer. It's not the AI that's right. the supercomputer. Yeah. We're, we're the supercomputer through these connections and these connections inform us and they make us smarter and smarter. And we can never leave a connect, even this call with you right now, we can never leave it the same person as we were when we started it. And all of these connections of every single person who ever touches our life, whether we know they touched our life or not, changes us. And that's who we become us, uh, who, we, who we become. And if you, uh, and what from there, what you start to see is the, be- the beauty and the love in everybody and everybody is looking for the same thing. So I've categorized this in my brain and in, in, in um, we're all searching for love and belonging. It's why we do everything. Every single thing is in service of that. Um, we tell ourselves a lie a lot of times that no, no, it's for this, right? But the reason why somebody wants to make more money is not from doing more pieces of paper. It's to, it's to 
have enough things to do so their family loves them or they're they're respected same same why do you, uh, why am i on your podcast right now to try to make impact to on other people to help them see see and that and if you go deeper on that it's it's it is love and belonging right it's the like why does that why does that matter to you and so i'm not saying that's a bad thing or, or it's a good thing but a lot of times that very same thing can keep us trapped in, in our own system because we, I use the victim analogy all the time mm-hmm. because it's easy to, everybody knows somebody who's, who's a victim. They're a victim because they want somebody to, they, they, they're lacking. So, um, that love and belonging. So they want people to come in and, uh, and, uh, and come closer. And when those people find that relationship hard and they move further away, the victim typically doubles down and creates more drama. Um, and what, what I've realized, uh, it, it to try to get people to come close. And, and from that, you have to go pretty simply love is all around them all the time. And they're the only one that doesn't know it and they're pushing it away with all their might. And so if that's true for the victim, then a simple question out of that is where are you the victim in your life? Because, because uh, I would say if, these things are really easy like crazy easy because when you see everyone else as a reflection of you and just their love and blood and what they, what they were really looking for, you start, you, you get out of the nonsense of what kind of the, 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 the pan, you see deeper and how we're all connected. Um, and I don't know. So I've done a lot of work myself trying to understand that what kind of why we do the things we do. And then to try to see that in others, to try to, to, uh, to, to, uh, <clears throat> and also to better myself in that, in that process. Boy, boy. Um, I, it's, it's funny and it, it's, you know, the, some other time we'll have to sit and, and talk for an hour, you know, just doing it all on that. And the, this, the shame of this world that we live in this fiat system, which is what really the genesis of your book and everything you talk about and a lot of, just a lot of Bitcoin as a general of you're in this weird world where, you know, we talk about price a lot. It's like, like we said earlier, the very first thing, it's it kind of this debate to get people in, unfortunately, because we're so worried about that. We're like, I would, if I had my choice, I would never talk about price. I, I, I can't stand talking about I price. Don't, I, right? I don't. I know. I, it's, I, it's, yeah. but you got to people, you got to suck people in, in, in a way in this fiat system we live in, because that's what everyone's so worried about. Cause that's what fiat does to people. And it's like, gosh, can't we talk about real things like this? But it doesn't, it won't get clicks. Like people won't watch people. You know, it's, it's, it's wild. Yeah, but and and I, I, I don't know if I d- agree with that. So it will it might not get as many clicks because people because our our attention is captured. Right, mm-hmm. think about yourself uh, slowing down at a car crash. Um, your attention is captured by the negative or something. So news just plays on grabbing your attention mm-hmm. and just grab, and so there's, there's a lot of car crashes, and then how do you get seen more? more car crashes, right? right Deep, right. W- something crazier because everybody talks about the crazy and the edge and it's not what the world looks like. Like go talk to your friends, get right. outside, go to the woods. Does not the world. Now, if you're living in that all the time, it will be a reflection back to you. It will look exactly like that. And you think the world looks like that in the world. Um, and, and when you, when you realize that is everybody's going through the world, describing the world, as a mere reflection of their own beliefs. Yeah. But now carry it to, to, uh, to the podcast. It doesn't matter if it gets clicks because if you actually cared at the, uh, about a deeper level, if you touched one soul, mm-hmm. one person and in a deep and meaningful way that changed them. And then they, and they, and they never said it was you and you didn't care if it was you and they, and they went on to touch millions of other people is, is, is that better than having a whole bunch of clicks? Now, I would argue for, if you're arguing for, I can't make enough money doing that. Right. right? That's a different, yeah. Yeah. But then, but but then what you're saying is I'm going to, I'm going to sell more car crashes to get paid and keep the system going uh, and by, by doing so. So these are the incongruencies in our thinking. That, that you really have to get to the bottom of the why you do the things you do. And then once you, once you realize why you're doing it, um, and if you're doing it uh, uh, for kind of the, the real reason, just do it and don't care. Yeah. No, I, 
I couldn't agree more. And it's, it, I talk to my wife about this all the time. I and mean, it's like, you know, God love her family, uh, friends and stuff like that. But, you know, like, as you know, a lot of them don't care to talk about these things, or at least they're not at the place in their life, uh, which you just kind of outlined to talk about or want to talk about it. And it's beyond frustrating where it's like, man, I, you could spend hours. I could, but we could spend all day talking about this. And it's like, where the, where the, you know, I guess you, you have to find the people with ears to hear and eyes to see, like you said, if it gets one person to watch it, that's what's most important. And that's, that's where I just, that's why I continue doing it. Cause it's like, you know, yeah, yeah it's not paying bills. It's, you know, but it's, it's the mission, right? It's the mission. Yeah. It's why we do it. So anyway, all right, to wrap up here, you've been overly generous with your time a little segment presented by Bitcoin trading cards, which Jeff will <laughs> at some point uh, will be gracing here. Um, you know, the book slash Jeff himself, whatever. So watch out for that here in the, in the future here, but um, just a little lightning round game to wrap. So we got to, you know, I don't know, 15, 18 words like that. So just whatever comes to your mind it could be a word. It could be a couple words, whatever, whatever comes to, to, to mind. Satoshi Nakamoto. Freedom. Compulsory government run schools. <laughs> Crime. <laughs> uh, the U.S. presidential election. Theater. Canadian truckers. Uh, what happens in a free market that pretends to be a free market under the guise of the state? <laughs> Privacy. Uh, imperative central banking uh, perhaps the greatest scam known to history mm. let's see this one don sherry hockey Nine canada 30 years the host <laughs> 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 uh at first fantastic and 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 uh, car crashes but uh <laughs> for, for, for saturday fantastic. night car crash yeah, exactly. And then, uh, uh, and then jump, and then jump the shark later in his <laughs> career. <laughs> Boy, that's, I had to throw it out to you because you're yeah. only, there's not many people that would get that or understand. So anyone can look that up that doesn't know. Um, Bitcoin conferences. Uh, uh, I, I love them because I get to meet uh, a whole bunch of really great people. Um, I like the, I typically like the smaller uh, ones better. John Maynard Keynes. Uh, he, he wrote, uh, he wrote something that, uh, I wrote it in my book. I just can't remember the exact thing, the same things, but living under constructs of, uh, of, uh, of a former dead economists, right. That, uh, and, and then he became that, that, that person. And so the number of non, the, how much nonsense is ascribed to him, but I, I think he too, he would be, he would roll over in his grave. Up to to what the things under his name have actually led to, and I think because he couldn't understand how in human incentives would be warped to that. Wild, absolutely wild. Elon Musk. <sighs> <laughs> this is a uh, uh, you, uh, fantastic entrepreneur or salesperson. But uh, uh, but not not deep enough, or, or or a blind spot here, whether that's knowing or unknowing, um, to protect uh, his ego. Mm. Well, yeah, that's a great great explanation. I couldn't agree more. Uh, women in Bitcoin. So many great minds, and uh, so many great uh, minds that are entering into uh, Bitcoin. There's so many women in Bitcoin that are entering in. So cool. Uh, 3D printing. Uh, early still, but inevitable. Love that. It's going to be amazing. Uh, travel. <laughs> As somebody who's traveled to about <laughs> uh, over 80 countries. Uh, yeah, uh, I just, I, I love travel. Love I, I love, I, I, I love getting to a community that you read about that, uh, that, uh, and, and, it, and it totally blows your mind because they're the same people all over the world. Same, same hope, same dreams, same everything else all over the world. It's incredible. Michael Saylor. Uh, 
Oh, uh, just a just a brilliant, uh, yeah, uh, brilliant person in Bitcoin. Uh, uh, deep understanding. And I had Andreas, so you can you can say this. However, I'm I'm kind of pausing it here because I wanted to know who was the person that really that you studied to really start understanding Bitcoin. That's really the question, I guess. Sorry, can you say that again? You just bumped your your internet. So I had Andreas Antonopoulos on here, but more the it was more of a question yep. to who did you who do you study actually to really to develop your understanding of Bitcoin? So Andre Andre was was uh, excellent, okay. but there's um, but I think this is this is my why. This is why. Um, the, and I said it before when we were talking about that connection to different people. I can't even tell you. I, I I don't think about I don't think about it as who are the top minds in Bitcoin and think about a kind of a, a strata layer that there. I think about it. I can learn from. I can learn anything from anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's how. Uh, so so different different frameworks to understand uh, different ideas and and sometimes somebody will say it that it will have no views, no understanding. No, they, they don't have a huge audience and everything else. And they've brought in an insight so then somebody else says it, or maybe somebody else paraphrases and it takes it to something and it came from somebody else that they don't even, they don't even know. That's how this network works. And so it's what I see more from that is how we are all so connected into it and the learning from each other as this goes. And you can learn from anybody. Then last couple here, Bitcoin trading cards. Sorry, you just bumped again. Just the last couple Bitcoin trading cards. Yeah, uh, about to be on them. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first person I've had to say that. So that's uh, yeah, I love yeah. that. Uh, the last two, the price of tomorrow. Ah, uh, glad I wrote it. I'm really glad I wrote it. Sorry, one more time. I missed it. Uh, the price of tomorrow is the last two. Yeah, so glad uh, glad I wrote the price of tomorrow. And ego death capital. Hmm. Uh, can't believe I get to do what I get to do with uh, with an amazing group of people doing it. So cool. So cool. Thank you so much for your time, Jeff. You, I, you, I, I know you, uh, you, you said it on Scott's interview, so I'll say it, but I know you said you're thinking of writing uh, another book and kind of working on something. So absolutely incredible. But I really, I would love a Jeff Booth frameworks book because I have, I have my own that I'm like writing to my children of like all the frameworks of my life and just like how I think about things and whatever. But that would be an incredible book to have just the Jeff book, first principles book or uh, frameworks. Cause that's, I think that's why everyone loves hearing you talk. Cause you're so consistent in your messaging, but it comes from first principles and frameworks. So it's beautiful. So, the, so, and, and I was thinking, and th- thanks for that. I'm actually thinking of including a number of the different frameworks just mm. that I just naturally use in the, in the book to be able to describe um, how to stay in that spot or how to improve on that spot. That's exactly what wow. um, the, so no, but, but thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's the thing that at least whether it's a sailor or you, or there's, it could be an aunt and her uncle, the people that are successful in life and they're so consistent, it comes down to these first principles, but no one teaches these frameworks or the decision-making as we said in the Gulf, government compulsory run schools that ain't no. taught. So fascinating. Yeah. And then once you understand that kind of, that's, that's it. And same thing, if you treat yourself as the the vehicle of learning instead of then you're then if the framework is producing an inferior result yes right yeah. then change framework change frame. yeah. right and so and and so so and uh, so that if I, I ironically that framework is actually something i just turn inward on myself and think about what does this does this look like so amazing so amazing yeah. where can people find you um, probably ego death capital, Jeff at ego death capital is what, uh, or ego death capital website, or, uh, I always ask people to look at my website, my personal website, jeffbooth.ca, because it'll have my Nostra pub key or different, any social media that I'm on will always be there. If it's yes. not there, then it's a, uh, yeah. then it's a scammer. Thank you. Thank you. So 
incredibly much and being overly generous with your time today. I apologize. We ran over a bit and uh, <laughs> got to cut an hour. So we're going to keep Thank going. You. So I appreciate you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you for checking out this episode of the Playable Characters Show brought to you by Bitcoin Trading Cards. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the future Bitcoin and financial experts we have on the show. Plus, we will be doing random big giveaways throughout different moments of shows of collectible cards, sats, merch, and more from guests so you won't not miss anything. This show does not constitute any investment advice, only freedom advice. Everything you see here is opinions from the hosts and the guests themselves, nothing further. Please don't trust, verify. For full transparency, I do lead marketing efforts at Bitcoin Trading Cards where we are trying to spread freedom to all of humanity and orange pill the world one collectible physical trading card at a time by making things fun and easy to talk about that normally make you want to cry. You can reach me directly through my email, brandon at btc-cards.com with any inquiries or playable character suggestions. See you on the next one.